Your eyes are opening, little one. When you were born, you were the tiniest baby bunny ever. That's why we named you Tiny Tim. Your brothers and sisters were a lot bigger than you, and you felt a little left out. Whoop, Tiny Tim, come back with your friends. But we knew, with a little extra help, you'd grow up to be just as big. First, we needed you to eat more. All right, Tiny Tim. Oh, you're the same weight from yesterday. You were too tiny to get food from your mom. So we fed you by hand. Tiny Tim, hello, my friend. Let's see if he held onto his weight from yesterday. He was 1.15. Let's pray he's at least that. You're 1.2, Tiny Tim. Okay, let's feed you, Bubba. The more you ate, the faster you grew. He's like, thank you, thank you for the milk. <laughs> okay, Tim, it's your turn for the weigh in. You ready, buddy? <laughs> You're so squirmy. Okay, here we go. Three! Yay! Oh my gosh! Good job! Yeah. He's like, did I do good, guys? Yeah. Wow. Tim, you're such a big boy now. Now that you were a little bigger, you wanted to hang out with your brothers and sisters right away. But you still had a little bit more growing up to do. Poor Tim, he can't get out to be with all his friends. You weren't going to give up, though. You just kept eating and growing. And one day, you started exploring. <laughs> Tim! Oh my gosh! Tim! <laughs> How did you do that? <laughs> Good job, Tiny Tim. You were ready to play with your big brothers and sisters. But they were so big, they were leaving for families of their own. You were a little sad, but you had someone even bigger to be with. Doodles! Being friends with a big dog like Doodles made everything more fun. <laughs> Good boy! What do you have there? Hmm? Is it a tiny Tim? Hi, Tim. <laughs> Every day was a new adventure. <laughs> and soon, you weren't the smallest anymore and knew how to be the bigger buddy. Aww. <laughs> so nice. Oh, dear. <laughs> So here you are, Tiny Tim. Except you're not so tiny anymore. You're big now. In all the best ways. Hi. Hello, I see you. <laughs> and ready to take on the world. You good boy. No matter how big it is. <laughs> oh, you're so sweet. When a wild baby leopard fell into a well, she couldn't climb back up. She was trapped. And she was scared. The rescuers were pretty surprised. Rescuing a lost dog is one thing. But a wild baby leopard? Lucky for the leopard, these rescuers had a plan. They used ropes to lower a cage down and swung it close to the little cub. They hoped she'd climb in so they could lift her to safety. She seemed interested in this strange new boxy thing, but she didn't trust it or the rescuers. And she didn't want to move. They tried using a pole to give her a nudge which she did not like very much. Still, she didn't move. Then the rescuers had an idea. Maybe if they just swung the cage to a wider part of the ledge and left the door open, 
the baby would get curious and climb inside. But she'd have to be more curious than scared. Was she? The rescuers waited until finally the little leopard stepped into the cage. What on earth is this thing? And got herself to safety. Even though she was out of the well, her journey wasn't over. Because, well, what do you do with the baby leopard? She had to go home to the wild, which meant the rescuers had to look for her mom. A wild leopard. Not usually a good idea. They searched and searched until they found leopard tracks. Maybe the mom made them? The rescuers weren't sure. So they came up with another plan. They'd bring the baby to the tracks, put her in a safe cage, and if mom came, they'd open it and reunite the leopard family. They waited far from the cage so the mom wouldn't get nervous, but kept an eye on the baby with a hidden camera. The baby leopard wanted to be let free, but the rescuers knew they had to be patient. The little baby was worried. The rescuers were worried too. And then, those are eyes. A leopard had arrived. Was it mom? The grown-up leopard seemed curious about what was in the cage and started growling some friendly growls. And the baby growled back. This leopard was definitely the baby's mom. They pulled open the cage and the baby and mama darted off into the night as a family, thanks to the rescuers and a curious baby leopard. Whoa! Excuse me, coming through. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Stick, 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 stick. Do, 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 I have a stick. Do, do, do. Oh, hi there, my name is Snoop. And I love sticks, like this one, or this one. So many sticks. I love my sticks, and my sticks love me. But let's get serious for a second, because I'm in a bit of a sticky situation. I am on a very important mission to find the biggest stick in the world. I found small sticks. I found medium sticks and some pretty large sticks too. But now it's time to find the biggest. It will be mine. And I will take it home and make it the centerpiece of my great stick collection. But where could this big gigantic stick be? I have searched the entire world and I can't find it anywhere. It's gotta be around here somewhere. Is it floating in here? Maybe it's over here. Could it be a muddy stick? Ah, mud. I'll just relax here for a minute. Okay, break time is over. <laughs> time to find that. No, Dad, I cannot shower right now. It will delay the mission. Don't you know I have to find the biggest stick? It's been my lifelong dream ever since I decided it was. Could this be it? No, it's definitely this one. What about this one? Let's just take them all home. Gonna take all my sticks home. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Just me and my sticks. Oh no! Who put this here? Don't they know I have sticks to take home? Maybe if I just angle it this way. Well, don't just stand there. Help me save my stick. Just a little to the left. Almost there. Yes! Ha <laughs> ha! I have seen so many sticks in my time that I've begun to wonder, will I ever find the biggest stick? 
What if I find one? And I think it's the biggest. But then later, I find an even bigger one. And so on, and so on, forever and ever. Never ever finding the actual biggest stick. I guess my search will never end. Maybe it's best I just give up. I don't think I'll ever find... Wait. <laughs> Do you smell that? It smells like... The biggest stick! Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Over here, over here! No oh boy, I found it! I found the biggest stick! We gotta get this home quick and add it to the collection. I did it. I found the biggest stick. Yes, I did. Do do do. Wow! Today was a great day. I found the biggest stick and I can finally rest. But a dog like me doesn't rest for long. When there's more sticks to find. Now I must find the smallest stick. And the brownest stick. And the stickiest stick. And the leafiest stick. And the muddiest stick. Stick, 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 stick. Mazzy Dog has a problem. Someone keeps coming into her yard every night. Someone or something. But by the time she goes outside in the morning, they're already gone. And her toys are all over the place. Who is doing this? Why are they doing it? Is it a raccoon? Is it a tiger? Mazzy needs to know. She's gonna stay up all night and wait. Mazzy, I hear them. Go! Oh, she almost caught them. What did they look like? Hmm, only one stripe on the tail. Can't be a raccoon. She does have orange fur, but I'm pretty sure a tiger wouldn't have run away from you, Mazzy. Then who is it? <sighs> Mazzy, we're gonna need to get more serious. We'll get ourselves a hidden camera and see what we can see. Aha, it's our suspect. But who or what are you? She looks like a dog. <gasps> She's a fox. A wild fox right outside the window. She must be the one playing with Mazzy's toys. Maybe we can catch her in the act. She's roaming around, but not touching the toys? Hmm, maybe this mystery isn't over. Who could be? Oh, she has a friend. Two fox best friends. She was waiting for him to play and chase each other and wrestle and <clears throat> whatever that is. We solved the mystery, Mazzy. These are the two who keep messing with your toys. <laughs> Mazzy, are you mad at the foxes? Why, for playing with your toys? Mazzy, be nice to the foxes. They're just trying to have some fun. Will you let them have fun? I know it's your backyard. That's a very good girl, Mazzy. You keep a close eye on the fox friends, but let them have the yard at night. And maybe someday, you could play out there with them. Wouldn't that be something? Whenever you're ready, Mazzy. It's this cat's first time getting stuck in a tree. I'm gonna get ya, I sure am. I know it. But for Normer, it's cat rescue number 70. This is cat rescue number 70. And this cat is, is about, uh, say, 60 feet up, right there. And I'm going to get him as quick as I can. 
He's never seen a cat in a tree that he can't save. Hey, Norman Adams, I'm up here rescuing the little kitty kitty, little Tommy. And once he started rescuing cats, he couldn't Come stop. On. Because there are so many cats out there that need his help. How long has he been up there? Oh, about two days. Okay, two days. Two days? Could you imagine being stuck up there for two days? But before he was saving cats, Norma was helping kids find forever homes. A true knight in shining armor. But after he retired, he realized he wasn't done saving lives just yet. And that's when he started rescuing cats. Yeah, this is my first cat rescue, and this kitty is just so grateful. Yeah. And there's the kitty right there. And uh, he's been up there six days now. Six days? I thought two days was long. Normer has always had a love for cats. He lives with a few at home. And he even kind of speaks cat. He's paying attention to me now. That's a good sign. Let me see what I can do. Even though Normer is just a regular guy who saves cats, he's figured out how to get any cat down at any height using some very special gadgets. You see this little flat bag here? This is the kitty bag right here. All right, Tigger, I'm gonna get you, okay? You see this bag right here? It's gonna go over your head and you're gonna feel really good, okay? Which have helped him rescue hundreds and hundreds of cats. Over 1,000 cats to be exact. Okay, this is cat rescue number 60. Okay, this is cat rescue number 117. And uh, it's a good 100 feet. This is cat rescue 259. Cat rescue 372. Okay, this is cat rescue 400. You okay? 527. Come on. Cat rescue 675, I believe. He's a real sweet. Okay. No cat gets left behind and every single one of Norma's rescues has been successful. This is Cat Rescue 776. Okay, I got Snowy! Being a rescuer is really exciting, but what's Norma's favorite part of the job? Reuniting a cat with their family. And all of this is out of the kindness of his heart. Because even the best climbers need a hand every now and then. <laughs> so the next time you see a cat stuck in a tree, just call Normer, and he'll make sure they get down safe and sound and home to their family. Almost there, almost there, kitty almost rescued. And the kitty's down. Okay, the cat's in the bag. <laughs> Presenting Dusty the Dog, Master of Scoots. Oh, uh, there he goes. Incredible. Uh, Tato. Sorry about this. Tato can be a bit rude. All right, where were we? Oh, even outside. Here, Dusty's doing his scoots. Tato, let Dusty scoot. Oh. 
Uh, Tato, could you, could you move, please? Don't, Tato. Tato! Oh, Tato. So rude. So impolite. Poor Dusty. Dusty, don't give up scooting. Please! We need you to scoot! Now more than ever! Dusty, I know you're upset. Dusty, no! Oh, you don't need to steal his toy! Dusty, you and Tato shouldn't be fighting! Maybe you could teach him how to scoot. I don't think he's getting it. There's only one pro scooter in this house, and his name is Dusty. At least you two are friends again. Ugh, Tato, come on! Now we are ready for a flight to the middle climates, and my passenger is uh, sleeping. It's Tongo's first time flying in an airplane, so he's curious and pretty scared. But Anthony knows the best place for him. Hey, little boy, ready for it? Safe in his lap. The first time rescuers saved a chimp far away from the sanctuary, they weren't sure how to get Pinga back safely. So they called Anthony, a pilot who loves animals. Could he help bring Pinga back? Anthony had never done anything like it before, but he was willing to try. Because the only thing he loved more than flying was baby chimps. But there was one problem. Pinga was too scared to fly in the special crate her rescuers made for her. So Anthony let Pinga fly up front as his first baby chimp co-pilot. Now, Anthony flies rescued chimps all the time and knows just how to get them ready. When he meets a chimp for the first time, he takes it slow. They're usually just babies and they might be afraid. But Anthony knows the best way to a baby chimp's heart. Good banana. Good banana. After a good sleep, hey boy. and more bananas, it's finally time for their first flight. Anthony's not sure how they'll feel about being so high in the air. Some are nervous. Or worse, curious. So Anthony makes room for them in his lap, and then they take off. Up in the air, Anthony knows all the tricks to comfort the babies. And when he picks their fleas, they always fall asleep. They usually snooze the whole way. But Anthony brings a bottle of milk for wake-ups. All went well. Very chill flight. Once Anthony lands the plane, they meet Itsaso, the sanctuary's director. She knows the right body language to get a chimp to trust her, and they always jump right into her arms. One day, these chimps will grow up and go back to the wild. Until then, they love calling the sanctuary home. And Anthony? He's got more chimps to fly. 
But that's not all. He's training the next group of pilots who will one day pick up a scared chimp, hold him tight, and take off into the sky. guy? Do you know what you are? You're a baby seagull who left his nest and got lost. But you found your way to us and didn't want to leave until you were big enough to fly. So we fed you by hand, just like your mom would. until you figured out you could eat anything you wanted. You got a wood mouse. Wow. We didn't know how long it would take for you to fly. But every day you did something new. Wait, wait, one second. Ah! And got really good at squawking. And after one week, you started talking to other seagulls. It was like you were saying, wait for me, I'll be flying with you soon. After two weeks, you were demanding people food. <laughs> That's a pretty grown up seagull thing to do. Uh oh. <laughs> hey, that's not food. After four weeks, your fluffy baby feathers had fallen off. You were so much bigger. And you started acting big. You like to swim, eat big fish, <laughs> stare down cats, And one day, you did something really big. You started to flap. Maybe you were scared at first, but we knew you could do it. And so did they. So we gave you a count of three. One, two, three. You were doing so good. Oh, geez. Well, no one ever said flying was easy. Six weeks later, it was time. You needed to leave our small backyard and fly in wide open spaces with the other big seagulls who'd been waiting for you. We knew we'd miss you so much. <laughs> you were our fluffy little guy, but you were ready to fly as the big seagull we always knew you'd be. Nothing stops you, little guy. You're so fast. Little Augie has a problem. His back legs don't really stand. It doesn't stop him from being the happiest little dog. So he wants to run. We're gonna help you, Augie. You ready? <coughs> the vet says your legs are having trouble standing. But exercise and practice might fix them. <coughs> Good boy. First puppy exercise. Leg tape. There you go. <laughs> You're okay. Next, do you want to try this wobble board? Balance practice. That's okay. Let's get back up again. Next exercise. Standing in a box. It holds your legs up. Where are you going? We promise 
that will help. Wow, Augie, are your legs getting stronger? Let's see what happens. On the underwater treadmill. Take it slow and have some peanut butter. Go, Augie, go! Somebody's big! You're looking good at the gym, but at home, you're still dragging your legs. We're missing that one extra thing. Good boy! What could it be? Maybe bad? Come on, Augie. Get those back legs going. Looking good in yellow. Augie! You're getting the hang of it. So many places to sniff. You're so fast! Now you go on short walks all the time. And when your legs get tired, you get these Augie-sized wheels. You can chase your friends. so hard while we tried so many things. But that smile means you're so glad you never gave up. Hello, my name is... No, oh, hold on, I need to clean that. Start over! As I was saying, my name is... Oh, well, that feels nice. My name is Mr. Biggles. Oh, no, apparently I'm getting a sweater. Hold on. My name is Mr. Bigglesworth. There, I said it. And yes, I am a bunny with no fur. See, here I am. This is me. And those are my feet. I was just born this way. My brothers and sisters all had fur, but I didn't. Back then, I was kind of worried nobody would like me. Because bunnies are usually so fluffy. And I am not. But a lady adopted me when I was just a little guy. And she thinks that I'm adorable. Hey, Sniffy Nose. Look at you, Sniffy. Yeah, and she gorgeous. I mean, she's not wrong. Even though I don't have fur, I am still very soft and cuddly. Especially when I wear sweatshirts. <gasps> wow. What is that? Some lettuce? Actually, being hairless is kind of great. First of all, I am very pink. And pink is the color that flamingos is. Second, I get petted all day. Third, I have many fashionable sweaters to keep me warm. Like this one, and this one, and my personal favorite, a lobster costume. Sometimes I try to eat the sweaters. They do not taste as good as they look. I get sweaters from my friends all over the world. The envelopes are delicious. Cheeky little feet, don't throw the envelope around. You might think that all I do is sit around in blankets looking cute, but I actually have a very busy schedule. In the morning, my mom feeds me breakfast. Spinach, so fresh. Then I run around this long tube thingy and, whoa, what was that? Let's see what's happening with this tube. Oh, okay, nothing scary. After that, I try to open this ball to get a treat. Let's see. Oh, I did it! And my mom feeds me a banana. Open the ball, get a banana. Life is good. After that, I go to visit my best friend. My friend is a giant, humongous, extra large bunny. If you ask me, he's a stranger looking bunny than I am. He doesn't even like carrots. But I don't mind. At the end of the day, I'm not even tired. No, sir. Not sleepy. Not... 
I guess I'm pretty loved. How do I know that? Well, I'm always getting hugs and cuddles. And when it's my birthday, my mom throws me a party. If you have not tried a lettuce cake with grapes on top, you are missing out. Even though I look a little different, I wouldn't want to be any bunny but me. These ducklings are stuck in a pool. Their mama wants to help them, but she's not sure how. One thing's for certain, these little ducks need a rescue. When 10 fluffy ducklings got stuck in a pool, their mama rushed over to help them. Plop! They're following her to the other side, so mama can show them how to jump out. They try and try, but they're just too small. Mama Duck doesn't know what to do. The little ducklings are kind of scared. But she has another idea. She swims over to the steps. Maybe they can jump out there. Nope. Still too high for little ducklings. What will they do now? Suddenly, Mama spots someone with a big blue net getting closer to her babies. He's trying to help, but she thinks he's trying to catch her ducklings. She plops back into the pool and leads them away from the net. The man with the net tries to lift the ducklings out of the pool one by one. But they fall right back into the pool. He tries again and again. But the ducklings want to be with their mama. Wherever mama goes, they go. The man really wants to help, but he doesn't know what else to do. Then, he has an idea. He makes another step out of some rocks. He's hoping it's the right size for the ducklings. But will it work? One, two, three, four, come on five, five and six, seven, Eight. There's nine. But there's still one duckling left. He doesn't know if he can do it. Oof. Almost, little quacker. You got this. He wiggles his fluffy feathers and lifts his webby feet. But huh, he falls. He gets back on the rock, and he does it! Now all ten ducklings are back together and off to find somewhere else to swim. Because no matter how small they are, or how many rocks they have to climb, a fluffy little duckling never gives up. When Coda's mom said he was getting a little brother... Hey, Coda. How do you feel about a little brother? He was like, um, no. Maybe if he just stuck his head in the couch, his mom would forget all about... Nope. That didn't work. Coda, meet your new little brother. Yogi. Coda was not happy. He didn't want to be an older brother. It meant he'd have to share his home and mom with someone else. Yogi knew Koda didn't like him. So he tried to change Koda's mind. He even got him a present. Good boy! Koda, look what Yogi gave you. Who doesn't like presents? But then something happened. Koda got sick. Everything's gonna be okay. 
Okay, Cody. The vet said Coda couldn't use his back legs anymore and would need wheels to move around. It was hard for Coda. The world seemed a little too big now. But he'd forgotten something. He had a little brother who wasn't going to let his big brother give up. And one day, Yogi tried something. He picked up Coda's leash and started tugging him. Coda wasn't sure at first. But then... Come on, boys. Good boys. Good boys. Good boys. Come on. Bring Coda. Good boy. Coda couldn't believe it. He was moving. All thanks to his little brother. Bring him over here. Bring Coda over here. Coda finally realized how much Yogi loved him and felt bad for the way he acted before. But it didn't matter now, because Coda and Yogi were brothers. And now, best friends. Come on, boys. Good boys. Good boys. What did you do? What did you do? And a funny thing happened. Little Yogi started acting like a big brother. He'd watch over Koda when he needed rest and play gently so he wouldn't get hurt. Good boy! Good boy let Koda have the toy. Before, the idea of having a little brother made Koda want to hide. But now, Koda couldn't imagine life without Yogi. They're brothers, friends, a family, where no one gets left behind. Good boys. What did you do? What did you and Coda do? What is that? It looks like a box. These kayakers were paddling down a river when they spotted a mysterious box. Like literally there could be anything inside of a box. There's a little head. Moving! What is it? <gasps> is it a turtle? Poor turtle. The kayakers didn't know how the turtle got into the box, but they knew he needed to get out. He couldn't escape because he was too big because we saw a small hole. He was trapped. Time for a turtle rescue. But how? Reaching down into the box with their hands might not be such a good idea. The rescuers decided to use a kayak paddle to scoop the turtle out of the box and move him to safety. Hi. Hi. Wait a minute. I thought I saw multiple heads. There's two. A double mission? Okay. One's big and one's small. The first one will be named Diamond. The second one's name is Tim. Tim the Tiny Turtle. I hope he doesn't get spooked by that giant paddle. He must be heavy. Careful! The rescuer looked for a safe place to set the first turtle down. I'd say that's a good spot for a turtle. While turtle number one got some rest, it was time to rescue turtle number two. Okay. Oh, hi! Trying to swim on the paddle. The rescuers thought their job was done. Just to be safe, they decided to check the box one more time. A third one? I have decided that this one's name is Little Dorian. <laughs> so many turtles! And a fourth? 
Okay, I, I, I was not prepared for this. Since the fourth was a mystery to me, its name is going to be Mystery. The turtles were free, and they knew exactly where to go. Straight to the river. Goodbye, Diamond. Goodbye, Tiny Tim. Goodbye, Little Dorian. Goodbye, Mystery. We don't know what could have happened to those turtles if they never showed up. Before you decide to walk away, you have to check things out. Every time I see a box up ahead, I tell my mom to roll down the window just so I can stick my head out to see if there's anything inside it. Normally it's nothing, but I check just in case every day because sometimes it is the turtles. Remember, if you see turtles or any other animal in danger, do not try to rescue them by yourself. Ask an adult family member for help. Whoa! That is a swarm of bees crawling on that jet plane. They're trying to turn this airplane into their home. But an airplane is not a great spot for a bee colony. Luckily, Hillary the Bee Rescuer is here to save the day by picking the bees up with her hands and placing them in her bee box. After a scoop or two, the other bees come running. Yes, these bees do have wings, but most of them are too tired to fly. Who knows how long they've been looking for a safe place to make their hive. Once all the bees are in the box, Hillary brings them to her home, where she has a whole yard full of bee colonies. She keeps them here to make sure they're healthy before they can be moved out to the wild. What's one way to know if a hive is healthy? Honey! Ooh, honey. Nice. Nice job. Hillary loves bees. She thinks they're kind of misunderstood. Bees don't fly around looking for someone to sting. When they come close, they're just trying to figure you out. Maybe you smell nice or look like a flower. And bees love flowers. In fact, bees' love of flowers is why they're so important to us. Bees pollinate plants, which helps them grow. 80% of plants on Earth need to be pollinated. So without bees, we'd be in a lot of trouble. We need every single honeybee, and we need rescuers like Hillary. When she gets the call to move a colony, she does whatever it takes to keep the whole hive safe, which isn't always easy. Like the time she was called to rescue a colony stuck at the bottom of a compost barrel. What are you gonna do, Hillary? First, she sprayed special smoke to help them calm down. And then, a saw. And just like that, they were free. Free as a bee. And off to Hillary's yard. Hillary gives each of her bees a name. Okay, not every single bee. That'd probably take a while. Instead, she names the colony. That's because according to Hillary, bees are kind of a super organism. All the bees work together and need each other. Sort of like how all the parts of your body make up one you. Bees are really special. So the next time you see a swarm on your broom, or your beach umbrella, or in your garage, or even in your high-tech Navy jet, don't panic. Just ask your parents to call your local bee rescuer, who will swoop in to save them anywhere. Hi, my name is Drax. Some people say I'm a big dog, but personally, I don't see it. I can fit in my mom's lap no problem, see? But enough about me, there's someone I really want you to meet. My little brother! I know what you're thinking. Little brother? <laughs> but you two are exactly the same size! What I mean is, he's my younger brother. 
And more importantly, he's my best friend. We're a pack of two. Ooh, secret table meeting. Okay, next time you have spaghetti, you know what to do. Hey. <sighs> my man. Oh my gosh. But it wasn't always this way. I used to be an only child without a single brother to play with. I had to make my own fun. And I was pretty good at it, not gonna lie. Have you heard about splashing? <laughs> it's the best. I'm basically a pro. Oh, and the playground. I love that too. They've got these really super fun things called slides. Slides are also the best. Slides and splashing are equally best. Uh, sorry, what were we talking about? Uh, the point is, I was having a pretty good time with just my mom and dad. But then, a strange thing happened. My mom's belly started to get bigger. What? I decided to keep an eye on her to make sure she was okay. After all, dogs are expert watchers. I watched my mom round the clock. Minus a few naps, of course. Standard dog procedure. Until suddenly, there was a new little human in the house. Double what? Mom said he was my little brother, and he sure was little. To be honest, I was a bit worried at first. I was pretty used to being an only child. Would I still get to do all my favorite fun stuff with this new guy around? Would we even have anything in common? I needed to figure out what this new little brother was all about. So I started by doing what I do best. I watched him just like I did with my mom. At first, he really didn't do anything, but soon he started to grow very, very slowly. He figured out how to roll over. At least I think he did. Are you doing it? I can't see from here. Then, after more time, he could finally stand. Kinda. Ooh. Ow! Hey, could you? Why did I lay right here? And standing eventually led to walking. But he was still so little, uh, young, I mean. Uh, obviously, we're the exact same size. And it seemed like it'd be forever until we could actually do splashing or slides. I started to worry. What if we didn't have anything in common? What if we never figured out how to play together? But then, the hose? <laughs> yeah, I love the hose. That's like one of the best ways to splash. Wait, 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 wait. Was this little guy finally big enough to play with me? That day was and is the greatest day of my life. I couldn't wait to find out what else we both liked. Fetch? <laughs> yes, please. We even invented our own version of fetch. Check it out. Little bro picks out the best balls, and I make sure they taste good. They do. And I was finally ready to teach him one of the things I'm best at, watching. There's actually a really complicated process to watching. Step one, look. Step two, continue looking. That, that's all the steps. Of course, my little bro mastered it in no time. <laughs> now we love looking out the window together. You never know what you might see. Sometimes we even see each other. Whoa. Like I said, we're the best pals ever. We probably have to wait a little longer to try slides though. He, he still has some growing to do but I don't mind waiting. Because even if we don't do anything at all, every day is the best day with my little brother, who's the exact same size as me and you cannot convince me otherwise. Oh, do you just give him a kiss? That was so nice. Oh my goodness. Wandy's always been really happy. Because when he was little, a hero saved his life. 
She found Wandy in her backyard with big scratches on his back. She wanted to take Wandy home and make him part of her family. But the more time they spent together, the more she noticed something wasn't right. Sometimes Wandy liked to do dog stuff, but other times he acted like something else. The lady decided to take Wandy to the vet, where they all got a big surprise. Wandy wasn't a dog. He was a dingo. Sorry, I'm a what? A dingo is a type of wild dog from Australia. They don't usually live with humans, and some people are actually afraid of them. The rescuer knew she couldn't raise a wild dingo in her house. So she called an animal sanctuary that's just for dingoes, who took in Wandy and introduced him to the pack. Wandy was pretty nervous to meet dingoes, even though he was one. He didn't know a thing about being a dingo. Weren't dingoes supposed to be fierce, scary, frightening? Wandy followed the others around and tried to copy what they were doing. Eventually, he figured out a few things, but the rescuers could tell he'd need some extra help. So they gave him a buddy. Hermione, the perfect dingo teacher. This is how you dig for food, Wandy. Now we wrestle. On a hot day, you just put your whole body in the water bin. Seriously, you gotta try it. Uh, Wandy, why are you eating grass? Don't look at me. No idea why he's doing that. With Hermione's help, Wandy started to get the hang of being a dingo. He sort of loved it. And he didn't have to be fierce at all. He played and explored and was part of the pack. Wandy still has a few things to learn, though. Like not hogging the food. But he'll get all the time he needs to figure out who he is. A wild, silly, speedy dingo. With a family to call his own. And the best home. Good luck getting that back. <laughs> this is Loki the pig. And he's a tiny boy. Aw, look at you. So adorable. But you're so tiny, you're shivering. Ooh, here, have some milk. There you go. Wow, you really like milk. Ooh, yeah. Do the happy milk dance, do the happy milk dance. Well, I'm glad you, whoa, Loki. Don't attack the pillows. Good boys don't do stuff like that. No, it can't be. Are you a bad boy? Such an adorable little piggy can't be bad, can he? No, I'm sure you're not really bad. You were just trying to play with the pillow, right? Why don't you say oink to some of the other pigs? There you go. Good, Loki. Wow, you're really excited. Maybe tone it down a little. <coughs> you're out of control. I can't believe it. Maybe you really are a bad boy. Well, hang on. You seem to really enjoy playing. And some of the other pigs just can't keep up with you. But you're trying to make friends. You'll get the hang of it soon. See, there you go. Play nice. Aw, look at you having lunch with your friends. Good boy. 
You're probably thirsty after all that playing and eating. What? Your friend won't share? Looks like he's the real bad boy. I'll get you another drink, Loki. Hey, that's mine. You're a little drink thief. Bad boy. Just wait and I'll get you your own drink. <coughs> Don't yell at me, I'm getting it. Hey, no foot biting. I don't believe this. You are a bad boy. This is the worst day of my life. Wait, now you're napping? But you were just being wild. Oh, I get it now. You're just a baby pig, Loki. And that means you've got baby piglet energy. You're not being bad. You just need to grow a little more. But right now, you're completely pooped. Aw, what a little cuddle monster. Just a pig in a blanket. Thank goodness. I knew a sweet little piglet like you couldn't be bad. You just don't know how to do anything at low speed. You go full bore all the time. And there's nothing wrong with that. We love you, Loki. You bad boy. Dodo Kids. Help the kittens find the subscribe button.